fat pregnant Rita. Actress Rita Simons has been playing Roxy Mitchell in EastEnders for five years. That is about as big as it's going to get. In 2006, Rita gave birth to twin daughters. There's no words for it. Overwhelmed. Oh, it's just amazing. It looks a bit like you. It's just a little bit of you and your husband or the one you love. In a little package. Incredible. The best feeling ever to date. Maya. Hello. At six months, Maya was diagnosed as moderately deaf. Right now. She's missing nerve endings and she's missing parts of her cochlea that mean you can't hear. She drops the camera, doesn't she? She's her mummy's daughter. Over the last five years, Maya's hearing has deteriorated. <laughs> now Rita and her husband Theo are faced with life-changing decisions that will affect Maya's future. Because there's a chance of her losing her hearing tomorrow, we do feel like we're constantly walking a tightrope um, that we could fall off of at any point with no given warning. Now aged five, Maya wears a hearing aid in each ear, which amplifies the sound around her. Boo. Yes. Hello. Hi. With her aids in, she can hear people speaking. Hey. Turn it off for me. With them out, she can only hear very loud sounds in her right ear and has no hearing in her left. The speech goes a little bit lazy when she takes her hearing aids out. That's because she can't hear what she's saying. Maya, what am I saying? Snake. 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 So there's a lot of high frequency Snake. sounds like the S and the K are both quite high frequency. Maya. Maya. Snake. Snake. Mummy. Ah. Uh. Mummy. Bum. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. <laughs> Rita is a working mum, spending up to six days a week on the East Enders set. Stand by and action! Oh, Granddad, it's my roots. Oh, are you telling me that doesn't come out of a bottle? <laughs> I got. Her husband Theo runs a hair salon in North London. Any change in your kid's life is going to be difficult to swallow. You automatically think of limitations. What does this mean for Maya? Why is this happening? Why? Why? Since birth, Maya has had a hearing checkup every three months. When you hear a sound, you have to put a ball in a bucket. The audiologist plays sounds at different volumes and frequencies to check how good Maya's hearing is. Can you hear a noise? The measurements taken today will be compared with previous results to reveal if there has been any further deterioration. Good guy. Doing ever so well, Maya. Maya was born with a widened vestibular yeah. aqueduct a deformity in her inner ear, which causes hearing loss. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this little soft tube just into your ear a little way, OK? And it measures the sound in your ear. Maya is also undergoing tests for a genetic disorder, Pendred syndrome. That's fine. Rita and Theo believe that if she has this condition, Maya will lose her hearing completely. All right. Our issue is her having the Pendred syndrome so we can prepare, if she does, yes. that she's going to lose her hearing. Mm. So we do really want to know, because if she has um, yeah. the widening of the vestibular duct, and that's her only issue, right. as far as hearing loss goes, then we're going to be very happy with that. No, that is the thing that causes hearing loss, deterioration. The large oh, vestibular see. aqueduct. I'm done. The condition she has now yeah. will cause her hearing loss, or can? Will. Right? Oh. Oh, Maya, 
Well, okay, sit okay. down, mate. Is there something not good? What did you think we were doing the test for? From what I gathered, it was to see if she had Pendred syndrome. Right. For what purpose were we doing it for? Because most kids with Pendred more or less tend to lose their hearing, so no, we're gearing not, to what? Why? It's not what it is. What is it? Basically, Pendred syndrome is information to find out if it's going to happen to her kids. It's not to find out about hearing loss at all. It can just deteriorate as well without. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Until this moment, Rita and Theo thought it might be possible for Maya to retain the level of hearing she currently has. What's a bit of a shock? You just don't want to hear it, do you know what I mean? You want them to say, actually, she's doing really well, then, you know, there's a chance she's going to be OK. But they can't say that. It's, like, mortifying. And I can't do anything about it. I can't say, you know what, Maya? Take my ears. Take my cochlears. Have them, because I so blatantly would. I always expect the worst, that I don't get hurt. Theo's quite an optimist, and I suppose he's open to emotional pain more than me, because I'm like that, no, everybody stay out. You know, the glass is always half full with him. So, yeah, I think it did shock him, and yes, he will try and take the answer you're giving him and twist it and make it sound good, but the truth is the truth. Close. Yeah. Here we go. And you need to clap. Cinderella, do your chores. I am. Like Maya, between 5 and 15% of deaf people have progressive hearing loss. They have this done. Yes. On top of this, doctors have told Rita and Theo that any bang to the head could accelerate damage to Maya's inner okay. ear which may cause her to lose her hearing completely. Is that there? Behind my back. You're just constantly trying to preserve, 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 preserve. And sometimes it seems so pointless because, unfortunately, it may all be futile in the end. Well, what do you want to be when you grow up, Maya? I want to be a fairy, a vet, or a... Um, a, show, a show player. A show player? or like an actress, or...? Um, a show player is when we do shows for everyone. She's absolutely great at singing. Great! I haven't at any point said to her, oh, it's very likely you're going to lose all your hearing. It's my job to worry about how we're going to manage it and how we're going to cope, and when the time is right, then I would tell her. I want to look at all the options out there. Each route is so different from the other. Um, so I guess exploring all of them and having an absolute understanding of each option is imperative for how we move forward when the dreaded day comes. Many people with hearing loss communicate using a combination of signing and speech. But some deaf people decide to live without sound altogether and use only sign language. You know, people say, oh, you should interact with the deaf community and, you, you know, you, you should be doing this, that and the next thing. It's just that we haven't felt we needed to. Her life is very full. She goes to ballet, she goes to street dance, she does all these things without anything having to be specifically designed for deaf kids. So... We haven't engaged. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm Rita. Nice to meet you. June, right? June. Come in, come in. Hi, I'm Theo. I'm Louise. Hi, Louise. Nice to meet you. Hi, Theo. June, a sign language teacher, is giving Rita and her family an introductory lesson in BSL. British Sign Language. June, hi. June, come here. Pleased to meet you. Sit up, please. Say hi. Come Sit and say up, hi. Say hi. <laughs> say hi. Maya? Say hi now, please. Mm. Nicely. Hi. I don't think she realises you're deaf yet. Maya, June's deaf like you. She's saying you're the same. She does the same. 
I can hear some noises, <coughs> but I can't hear, obviously, people speaking. It's only signing that I communicate through. My family are deaf as well, so... Oh, right, so oh, you're okay. from a deaf family, so everyone in your family signs. Yeah. Where do you guys live? <laughs> That's a sign for live. Oh, OK. Live. With your finger here, live. <laughs> Twins. Twins. Is Jamie doing it? I want to see. Twins. Walking. Car drive. drive. <laughs> How do you get to school? Yeah. Jean's talking to you. J Maya, just sit up. Can we explain something? This is all Do you know why we're doing this? You, Listen to Maya. Nana. So that Nana and Daddy and Mummy and Jamie can, can all sign so we all know what to do. This will For be you. Fun. For you. For you, darling. OK? Yeah? So you be really good. And yeah. then when you're in the bath and you can't hear us, we can sign to each other. That's great, isn't it? But if you don't want to do it, then you go, yeah? <laughs> go on, bye-bye. We'll teach it to her after. When she feels like learning, she's like a sponge. And when she feels like playing up, she just does whatever she wants, which is what she's doing now. And when I started signing, I was about eight months old. My parents are deaf, so it was easy to understand and pick it all up. You've never worn hearing aids? Sign language is just as good, really, is it? So you don't desire at all to wear them? You're, the way it works for you, it works no, for you, right? No, it gives right? me a headache, yeah. Really? It gives me a real big headache. So noisy. I'm proud to be deaf. I'm born deaf. And if I didn't have sign language, what would I do? I wouldn't have any identity at all. Like, for example, like for you, when, when Maya gets older, she'll feel that she's probably missing out on something, maybe on... <laughs> deaf people and how they communicate. But then you're in a better, I suppose, position than, say, Maya, because you come from a deaf family, so this is a way of life for you. Whereas if you come from a hearing family, you want your children to, to do what you do and be the same as you, just like your parents wanted you to be the same as them. I presume. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. So nice, so nice to meet you. Thank See you bye. later. Thank you. Thank you. With our yeah. lifestyle, it is impossible to schedule, is it not, a trip to the zoo, for God's sake? Oh, yeah, it is very difficult. Um, what I can't imagine is being able to find the time to schedule yet another thing. Where do you draw the line between what's enjoyable for Maya, like going to musical theatre classes after school and like going to ballet and the things she loves doing, where do you draw the line between it being something she needs to do that might bore her a little bit because it's something she needs. And because it's not something she absolutely needs, I don't want to take away one of her other things that she enjoys doing... No, I agree. ...to replace it with that. And I haven't got the time to take her anyway. Yeah. The worst thing it would be if Maya doesn't do any sign language. That would be a bad thing, I think, because maybe her hearing might suffer quite a lot and she might not be able to communicate with others. So they all need to learn sign language. I think that's definitely a priority, if anything did happen. No more. Out. <laughs> right. You go and wait in your bedroom. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Wait, it's Jamie right here. <laughs> Does it really hurt? Oh God! Not good at all. Okay, now listen. How's your ear, how's your ears? Can you hear me properly? Promise me. How do your ears feel? Are you gonna laugh? <laughs> Come on, let's do your ears. Let's do your ears. Come get into. It's sheer panic for me. It's the one thing that causes me to just freak about her because I don't know how severe it is. You know, I'm not her. I didn't feel the bang. I don't know how hard she's done it. And, I, and I'm very, very sure in my gut that somewhere along the line, a bang on the head is what caused her to decline in the right ear anyway. Can you hear me? That's it. She just said her head hurt a teeny bit. I do not like that at all. It's just rubbish. It's rubbish that in one moment of being five, 
Can you hear me now? You can have one sense missing. Can you hear me now? It seems so unfair. But it is what it is, isn't it? Two days after banging her head, Rita and Theo are taking Maya for another hearing test. <laughs> when you hear a little beep, you put one of the animals in there. She knows you. this test very you well, You know that, don't you? don't The results are then checked against her last test four weeks ago. Absolutely the same. Yeah, absolutely okay. the same as before. Good. This is what it looks like, Maya, when we're watching you. <laughs> oh, my good God. <laughs> Paul thinks it's a good idea for Rita and Theo to experience the world like Maya. He's making custom ear moulds that will simulate the same level of hearing loss their daughter has. I can't really hear anything. I can hear myself. Of course! I'm just going to lift up from Hello. the bottom. Have you ever seen a penguin come to sea? Take a look at me, a penguin you will see. Penguin's attention! Penguin salutes! Right! Is this right? No. Right arm, have you ever seen a penguin come to sea? Do you need to put your jumper on, Maya? 90% of deaf children are born into hearing families. Rita is meeting another hearing mother, Trish Thompson, who has a seven-year-old deaf daughter. <laughs> Paris has the same hearing loss as Maya. Unlike the majority of deaf children, Paris attends a specialist deaf school. So I have given Paris sign language. Mm -hmm. I've found it really, really useful. I don't know how you feel about sign language. We haven't embraced the deaf community and we haven't sent her to special school. She's in mainstream school. Um... Deaf culture and deaf community is such an important thing because when they leave school, they do gravita gravitate towards their culture, their community. They have lots of things in common. The biggest thing in common is communication breakdown. Where are you? Where are you? Keen to demonstrate how Maya communicates, Rita shows a video of Maya talking to her dad. There's communication breakdown there. He's asked her a question, she's just carrying on with it. She didn't understand what he said, she looked down. And then she just carried on again. So she is actually dealing with communication breakdown. I don't understand where she hasn't understood the question. Yeah, you see? Well, he's asked her twice. Yeah. And she's like, like that. Mm -hmm. And you could see it. Mm -hmm. It registered in her mind. There was that pause, that a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. And then she got herself back again and she, you know, carried on. What Maya is doing is she is assessing her world around her. And I believe that with Paris, what I've given her that's different is that she can assess her world around her within the deaf community and understand how to do it better mm -hmm. because she's given the tools mm -hmm. to be able to say things like, again, please... Can you just say that again, please, because I don't understand. She'll only do that because she sees other deaf role models. So she's copying so she's... behaviour like kids do yes. in order to grow yes, socially. And, yeah, yes, I understand she is. that. What I'm concerned about is that if you treat Maya the way you're treating her now and trying to keep her as equal as you can with the hearing sibling, mm -hmm. I'm concerned because you can never make a hearing child out of a deaf child. Come on then, Maya. Go and sit down on the sofa, please. 
Right, come on, who wants to read first? Me! Come on then. The main right, place where deaf to, children experience to, communication to, breakdown to, is at school. The children found a baby bird. Maya's actually getting on fine at school at the moment. She is absolutely on par with her target for her age. Cheep, cheep, How does it go? Cheep, cheep. She has to work that much harder to concentrate than all the other kids, and she does get very tired by about 12 o'clock. And then she gets ratty, and then she throws tantrums, and she throws more tantrums at school than any other kid. That's for sure, and that's because she's working really hard to hear what, what's being said. Um, that's it, that's after. Um, look after, read. No, Maya, you're actually guessing now. Come on, read it. it. Maya, come here, please. Come. I don't know what it says. Josh? Looked after. Um, I do have to face the fact that it's very likely she'll need more specialist attention as she gets older, so I'm kind of looking at everything to keep my, you know, all my options covered. Said the bird. <gasps> Very good. Hello, Mrs. Hello. Harris. Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. This is Rita, who's Hi. come to visit us. Hi. Karen Smith is the head teacher at Mary Hare Primary, a specialist deaf school. Rita, would you like them to introduce themselves? I would love you to. Nine out of ten pupils go on to further education or university. Then I'm Hannah. Hello, Hannah. Um, and you're 11? How old are you? I'm nine. Oh, you're seven. nine. And where do you live? In Butcher Keys. And is it far? Does it take you a long time to get to school? Mm. Does it take you a long time to get to school? Yeah. Is it boring? Mm. Mm. But it's lovely to meet you all. Sorry, I'm interrupting your class. You can get on with whatever you were doing now. <laughs> ignore me, ignore us. <laughs> I'll stand here for a minute. I think we're going to do a bit about our bones now. So what would be the benefits for Maya if I was to send her here that she can't get from mainstream school? It's only if you start noticing signs that suggest that she's not happy and that things are... are distressing her. We have a lot of tantrum throwing with Maya. Is that when she hasn't quite grasped what's being said or gets the wrong end of the stick? Do you know what I think it is more than anything? It's when she's so tired yeah. from trying to listen to yeah. everything that's being said that she will snap mm. at the slightest opportunity. Mm. So I don't think it's her struggling. I think it's her struggling to cope in a hearing environment. So it's the concentration she uses and then the exhaustion. Yeah. Well, they don't understand why they can't learn in the same way as their peers and why they're sitting in a classroom and they can't write or read in the same way as their yeah. neighbour can. Oh. Yeah. And I've... now they come here and all their peers are doing the same. Yes. They've all got hearing aids. Yes. They all look the same. And they don't feel stupid. It's really nice to see that they're all playing together equally. There's no odd child out here, which unfortunately is the case in a mainstream school. Whether it's executed or not, there is an odd child out with a deaf child. And I love that they're all in the same boat playing together. It's lovely. I'm really surprised at how much Maya could get out of a place like this, but still not not surprised enough to go, OK, you're going to quit mainstream school, but very reassured to know that if the time came and I needed to, that there are places like this available. But there is a conflict now because I do know that there's somewhere out there that can enhance her learning experience. The majority of the pupils have cochlear implants, an electrode inserted in the ear with an external processor, that transmits sound to the inner ear through a magnet on their head. It enables people who have little or no hearing to hear those around them. And you've got two cochleas, haven't you? I only got one, and I'm getting one soon. You have to change the batteries every two days. <sighs> but apart from that, it's good, right? Yeah. Because you can hear. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah.
The little one on the left must be about your, your daughter. They all remind me of my daughter. Completely. Do they? Yeah. Immediately. Really? Immediately. Because she's uh, all singing, all dancing. This little mask is about to run on. Since this is the first time he's acted on stage. He needs help from Opal. The little girl beckoning him on. upsets me because those kids just get on with life. They don't see themselves as having anything wrong with them. So it's their, it's their spirit, it's their perseverance. I just think they're gorgeous. And when I see little kids that remind me of Maya, it's such a connection. It's like looking at my child. You see the really cumbersome equipment on their heads, you see the lights flashing and you think, that probably will be my daughter in a few years' time. Yeah, and Jill went up the hill. To try and understand and experience life the way Maya does, without her hearing aids, Rita and Theo are spending the day wearing custom-made moulds that will block out sound to the same levels as Maya. <laughs> so weird. Why? Because I can't hear anything! That's so weird. What does it sound like? Not a lot. I can hear myself breathing. That's pretty much it. I can't hear cars. I just heard a really loud buzz. What was that? I can hear that. You feel very isolated. I have a lot of banter with my staff and with other customers. I say hello to every customer that comes in the door, whether I'm doing their hair or not, and I found to say that I haven't done that. I think if I experienced this over a long period of time, I would probably become quite withdrawn. I'm just finding myself less interested in everything because I can't hear what's going on, and therefore my personality is just sort of... I've just gone into like a, about everything, whereas I'm normally quite up and in your face. And like, there's a joke at every corner and I, I, I can't be bothered because I don't know what anyone's talking about. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me now? No. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah. You're really ugly. I can't hear what you're saying, I can just oh, hear a noise. You're really ugly. Huh? You're really ugly. I'm really ugly. <laughs> Got it. Was that a guess? What? I want a divorce. <laughs> 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 Help me out, son. Come on. <laughs> so what's she saying? I said I want a divorce. <laughs> yeah, harsh, isn't it? Did you thought that was funny? Oh, it was funny. Sailing back. Oh. If I couldn't take him out, I'd hate it. For me, it was just more uh, apparent than ever that if and when Maya loses her hearing, we find her an alternative way to hear. Yeah. For a child who can hear with hearing aids, to go back to hearing what I heard today wouldn't be an option. If Maya loses her hearing altogether, the only way to give her sound would be with a cochlear implant. 
Jack, do you want to come and say hello? Anybody considering the operation is advised to meet other people in the same situation. <laughs> so, Jack, this is Rita. Jack Hi. is three years older than Maya and has the same hearing loss. Let go. Let go of my... You're having an operation soon. Cut Do you know why you're having it? Make me even louder. Yes. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's going to be exciting when you can hear more? Yeah. Do you know what side you're having it? What? This side. That side. Oh, it's so exciting. What do you think about cochlear implant then? Do you think that Rita's daughter should have one? Yeah. You do? During the three-hour cochlear implant operation, a hole will be drilled into Jack's skull and an electrode is placed in the inner ear. It stimulates nerve endings that send signals to the brain which should recognise them as sound. Jack's surgeon is Mr Pringle. It's an amazing uh, technological advance. You know, the cochlear itself has something like 30,000 nerve fibres and 12,000 nerve endings, and we put a little uh, plastic strip with anything between 12 to 20 electrodes on, and just by stimulating those electrodes, the brain is able to interpret sound. So it is amazing, amazing that you can take someone who is profoundly deaf, which means that they can stand next to someone with a chainsaw and not hear it, you can put an implant in, and then they can speak to a stranger on the telephone. So was it an easy decision deciding to do this? We tried to get as much information as possible. We went on the internet. We were researching everything. Um, it was just the hardest decision. Did because... you come across cons and think, oh, no, I don't want to do it. No, 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 he can't. Did you there, go through any of that? There weren't very many. Really? I have to admit. Did you give Jack a say in it at um, all? Yeah, Jack had a big say, to be honest with you. The first thing he said was, yes, I want it. I now know that it's all to do with the frustration of what life is like not hearing like everyone else. Mm -hmm. Why is it that you've decided to do it if he's still got a bit of hearing? We do know that his hearing is likely to drop um, over the next few years and we just feel that we just want to give him every opportunity now. He's coping. Um, why cope? when he could thrive. There are no official statistics for the success rate of cochlear implants. Many recipients find them very effective. Some find the change in sound distressing and in some cases, the surgery doesn't restore hearing at all. Jack's implant will be activated in four weeks. Only then will everyone know if he's able to hear again. Have they been told that the cochlea will give him better hearing than what he's got now? Yeah. I do really want to see if we can find out what's, what, what, what the hearing is like. Not necessarily the level of the hearing, but the sounds. Why? Oh, how nice well, would it what be? What difference is it going to make? I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what difference. Because if we hear it and we think, yeah. that's amazing, we didn't think it was going to be like that, then it gives us more confidence, which gives her so more for confidence. For me and you. Well. See, I'm thinking, well, we'll hear it and it'll sound horrific. <laughs> so, but let's be prepared for that. <laughs> you're yeah, I, you're I, I, dreaming, yeah, but, I, but yeah, okay. I already, already have prepared for it being awful. So, I kind of feel like I need to know that information, if we, like now. One, two, three, four. Oh, yeah. Cochlear implants are controversial. If Rita and Theo decide on an implant for Maya, many deaf people will see this as a rejection of their culture and language, BSL. Before any decision is made about Maya's future, Trish Thompson wants Rita to meet her deaf friends, Robbie and Jean. I love the deaf community. I love the culture, I love the language, um, I love the richness of it. It's a fantastic place to be. BSL is a recognised language, like French or German. It's my language. BSL is worth so much, 
It's so valuable to us because I feel when I'm with deaf people, we can communicate. It's really easy to communicate. I disagree with people feeling sorry for me because I can do things. I'm positive. I can achieve. Don't feel sorry for me. It's a hard thing for a hearing person to interact with a deaf person. Hearing people are very uh, cautious. They don't know what to do and they find it really difficult. It is a very difficult bridge for a hearing person to cross, but as a hearing parent of a deaf child, she needs to cross that bridge. What do you do? I work with the hairdresser. I work as a hairdresser. Ah! What do you do? Uh, I'm a teacher. Are you? Yes. Where do you teach? Um, recently worked in London. Okay, teaching? Uh, special needs. Amazing. Yeah. Your speech is so good. So, can I ask, um, have you had any involvement with deaf culture? I haven't had a lot of integration with the deaf community because it's never been necessary I guess it just hasn't we haven't evolved that way I think at the moment for a child of five you have to be prepared to, to teach to uh, meet the deaf community to learn about her culture I have concerns that if parents don't learn any BSL or any sign language in the future you know that will die out I want to see the deaf community continue do you think that's because since then, technology has advanced so much that now doctors and, you know, clinicians and are, are prescribing much more artificial sound than going down the old-fashioned route, which is BSL and, you know, deaf community. Do you think that's why it's dying out? I think the doctors like to explore new things, I think, you know. Like, you know, people are living longer. It's the same as this with the cochlear implants. They, they like to see things moving on. But if it was my child, I had the same sort of hearing loss as yours. Or I wouldn't give them a cochlear implant. At the moment, I'm pro-cochlear. I'm also very pro uh, a child who likes her sound. She's not a child who likes to take her hearing aids out. My feeling is it's like an abuse on a child to put a cochlear <laughs> implant. Yeah, I completely I disagree agree. with it. That's that's my own view. You know, they're too young to have that, and they won't be, they won't understand what that means. That's my. That's I, my I understand your point. Like abuse. But I wouldn't go as far as to say it's abuse because abuse is when you don't love somebody. Abuse is when you went to inflict harm on somebody and I don't want to inflict harm on my daughter so I wouldn't go quite as far as to say abuse <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's similar for me. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. fairly resentful yeah. at being called an abuser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People within the deaf community do have a strong view and I don't disagree with them. I just want to know why. Give me your reasons as to why I should do what you say I should do. I don't go around screaming at deaf people to put a hearing aid in. Um... I don't go around screaming at deaf people to start talking. So why are you telling me I should do what you do? I want valid reasons. We only see things in our own terms. So as hearing people, we interpret things in hearing terminology. And there's two things. We interpret that if they speak, they're fine. If they have, they have equipment, they're fine. Whereas on a deaf point of view, that isn't fine. There are other things. That, that make the whole deaf person. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Lions and tigers and bears. Maya, <laughs> come here. Lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Lions and tigers and bears. Oh In their my. quest to understand the implications of giving Maya a cochlear implant, Theo's going to Oxford University to meet Professor Andrew King who's created a computer programme that simulates what people can hear with the device. If Maya couldn't hear music, or she couldn't make out music, or it was all really monotone and she couldn't carry on singing, it would, it would, it would, be, it would upset me. It would, it, would, it would probably upset Maya in the future, because she loves music, you know, she's a performer. And I suppose it's important to me to kind of be prepared. You know, I feel like... I just want to find out as much information as possible about it so I know exactly what's going to kind of happen. Our concern was music. 
because we've never heard what a cochlear implant sounds like, we also don't know what sort of sound she'll be having. Okay, what I'm going to do is to play you a, a, a sound clip, uh, which is a simulation of what a cochlear implant, what sounds pass through a co cochlear implant, might sound like to someone who's uh, using one of those devices to replace their hearing. Sounds like noise, doesn't it? The rhythm and the tempo of the music are there, but what's missing is the melody. It's a very sort of mechanical, um, almost sort of Dalek-like Have sound. you got what that sounds like normally? Yeah. Very different. So let's go to the um, example uh, of speech. If we play the, the, the real version of this... Well, it looks like a very busy week here at the Weather Centre because there's a lot happening in the Atlantic and most of it is heading our way. It could be a very interesting week because it's... I'm just going to stop that there because it, it goes on for a... Yeah, I don't see any more of that, really. Yeah, it's hard to hear, to be honest. OK, but in some ways you've hit upon the key thing. The more you listen to it, the better you get. The brain is able to um, interpret this um, very um, crude, to some extent distorted signal uh, and to learn to associate um, that with real speech sounds. Yeah. My brain's got to try and make sense of it, <laughs> let alone my daughter's. I think Rita sees it as she's just going to have a cochlear and that's that, you know? I don't think she's thinking too much about what it's going to be like sound-wise because she's been told such good things about the cochlear, whereas I'm, because I don't know about it, I kind of want to know more. So she had a cochlear on one ear and her bad ear that's kaput anyway, that doesn't do anything. Well, at the moment it does. It helps her with her okay, speech. Yeah. Even though it doesn't give hearing, it helps her with her Fine. speech. Fine, so if she had a cochlear tomorrow in that ear, yeah. she'd have great hearing. You wouldn't put a cochlear in, obviously, until such time as she needs one. Mm. And at the moment she doesn't. Mm. Maya's future is what it's about, isn't it, really? And. I will ha the way I'm taking it now is one day at a time. Mm. I'm not going to plan her future, think about her future. Maya will make her own future. Well, you are thinking about her future. Yeah, I am thinking about her future, but I'm not thinking she's going to be all right, she's not going to be all right. I'm thinking that... You're not predicting her future, no. but you're thinking about things to put in place for her future. Yeah, but I'm thinking about now. <laughs> and I... It's been four weeks since Jack's operation. Today, Jack and his family will find out if he is able to hear again in his right ear. Put this on your ears. The audiologist is going to play beeps into Jack's ear to see if his brain can recognise the sound. Cochlear implants are irreversible, so if the operation hasn't worked, Jack will lose all hearing in his right ear. Jack, listen. Can you hear anything? I can't hear it. You can't hear it? OK, so I'll point it... Good. Yeah, I'll point it out. After eight attempts, Jack still can't hear anything. Can you hear that now? <coughs> listen again, then. Now. Okay, so listen again. Yay! Good, well done. Jack's brain is learning to recognise and interpret the sound and will continue to do so over the following months. Jack, you should be able to hear through your processor now. Yeah, it's me talking to you. Can you hear my voice? Now they have to see if Jack can hear speech. 
Can you hear me? Do I sound a bit funny? Do I? Can you hear something? No. You can't hear anything. <laughs> okay. We'll make it a bit louder, we'll a bit louder then. That's fine. Because you can see I'm talking. Just just being a typical yeah. Jack? Yeah. Jack, did you hear Mummy and Daddy talking then? Did you hear yeah. something? Because yeah. you turned round. Did, did you hear me, Jack? He's just turned to you, which make, indicates yeah. to me he is hearing your voice, but he's not. Yeah. his brain's not recognising what it is yeah. at the moment. <coughs> the reaction is lovely to I see. Know. Yeah. And especially, you know, when you say to him, can you hear that? And it's no. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> I definitely went into this thinking it was a big intrusive contraption and it's all a massive nightmare. And, and looking at Jack and looking at his reaction as well, it's going to change his life and it's going to change his life for the better. Cochlear implants are only suitable for people with severe hearing loss when their hearing aids are no longer as effective as they once were. Rita is at the Ear Institute in London to discuss with audiologist Bridget Harley whether it's the right time for Maya to have a cochlear implant. This way. When is it morally OK? Where do you draw the line between telling your child what they have to have done and letting your child make the decision? Well, what do you think Maya would want to say on this question? How would Maya feel if you said to her, we're taking your hearing aids away for a week? Yeah, devastated. OK. So I'd say the bottom line is we've made our choice. OK, super. Yeah, which I hadn't done last time I spoke to you, no. did I? If I had an audiogram, I could tell you today, but... If, I have it. Do you? OK. I'll leave it with you. Let me tell you quick, and then I can tell you whether she's a candidate for her okay. right ear. Because it might be worthwhile getting her implanted on the right so that she's get, yeah. getting used to the sound. Yeah. And, and while then, she's still got fabulous, please and, God, hearing in her left. And then she can use acoustic amplification and electrical amplification so that she's got this transition period, yeah. maybe. OK, so that's from today. Yeah, that um, makes her eligible for a copy okay. for that side. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. I have learned so much. I went into it not knowing anything. Midway, I probably thought, oh my God, I'm being really naive. There's a lot I need to put in place for Maya with the sign language and possibly a deaf school. And now I've changed my mind again and I want to go, I'm 100% sure, down the cochlear route. I'm bringing her up this way. This is the way she's going to be because of her upbringing, just like I'm the way I am because my parents brought me up a certain way. I don't want Maya to have a cochlear implant now because she's doing so well. What we're hoping um, which is very possible that she can get to maybe eight, nine years old where she understands it a lot more and would want to have one to help her hearing. And that would be a better place to be for us. Regardless to what anyone from the deaf community says, and I understand everyone has their own opinion, I cannot fathom for the life of me, and I've tried, that if sound is on offer, why you wouldn't use it. This programme is available now with British Sign Language on the BBC iPlayer and will also be repeated later tonight in the Sign Zone at 1.20.